welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 280. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. And this is a podcast about knitting, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from and I live. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. And if you would like to follow me on social media, I am at Vine on Instagram, where I am most active. And show notes for this episode can be found down in the description box below. I used to keep show notes over at yarngasmpodcast.com. However, I feel like it's a little bit more convenient for me to pop the show notes in the description box below. I feel like they're a little bit more accessible there. Uh, and I will also be posting them over in the Yarngasm Ravelry group, which is a place to be if you would like to chat about all things Yarngasm, uh, ask questions about the podcast, share your whips, your FOs, and join in the general chatter surrounding Yarngasm. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, this episode will be the last normal episode that I upload until I get back from vacation. Dennis and I are headed up to Cape Cod this week, so we have a whole week out of the city. It's gonna be great. Uh, in the meantime, I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging. I did pre-record a Ask Me Anything episode, so thank you so much to everybody who left questions in the AMA thread over on Ravelry and on the last YouTube video that I posted. I gathered as many questions as I I could and try to answer all of them. Uh, but yes, that is pre-recorded, it's edited, it's in the can, and it's uploaded on YouTube and scheduled to publish next Thursday. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I had fun answering all of your questions. I have to say, AMA, AMA episodes are one of my favorite episodes to record. I should probably do more of them. But anyway, I digress. Uh, welcome to the podcast. It's probably going to be a shorter episode than usual, only because I don't really have that much knitting to share this week. Uh, I really made no progress on my current projects. Uh, it's just been one of those weeks where I've been running around like a chicken with its head cut off because I'm trying to get all the things done before heading out on vacation. So anyway, I wanted to get an episode out to you before I left, uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. Just a quick thank you and word from our sponsor, Skillshare. If you've been following the podcast, you know I've been trying to up my photography game, trying to learn a new language. I definitely use Skillshare for all of those things. And if there's something out there that you're trying to learn, be it a new knitting technique, sewing technique, I think it's a platform that you guys will really enjoy as well. So Skillshare is generously offering my viewers a two month free subscription to try them out. Uh, you can find the link in the, in the description box below. Just click on the link and enter the promo code uh, at checkout and you can try Skillshare for two months. I think that's a pretty amazing deal. So that said, let's get on with the show. Uh, let's get into what's currently on my needles. I have... <clears throat> I got a case of the dropsies today. But anyway, <laughs> living in my Home Row Fiber Co. Uh, project bag, which I have decided to decorate with all my crazy enamel pins. So many enamel pins, guys, I don't know. I have to put a cap on it, I think. Uh, but anyway, living in my Home Row Fiber Co. bag is my smocket shawl, and I honestly have not made much progress. Although it might feel like I, I haven't made much progress on it, but I actually have put a little bit of a dent in it. So yeah, which way is the right side? Okay, this is the right side. Yeah. So I've started transitioning into the third colorway or fading into the third colorway. And yeah, this is a pattern by Stephen West. It is not brioche. Uh, I, I get a lot of questions from viewers asking me, is this brioche? This is not brioche. There's no brioche involved. It is all just plain garter stitch ribbing. Uh, so a couple rows of knit, couple rows of purl, and you have this kind of mock brioche effect, if you will. So uh, yeah, and this colorway here is La Bienne May in her dusk colorway. And the middle colorway fades into Skein Queen in her Mountain Heather colorway. And then here we have um, Chocolate Chambord by The Woolen Rabbit. So that's this color right here. So it's gonna fade into this really awesome rich purpley chocolate purple brown color, if that makes sense. So yeah, that that is that is where I am with my smocket shawl. And you guys, it's just been, it's, ex it's still exactly what I've been needing to knit on. Just plain back and forth, back and forth stockinette. Um, yeah, I, I'm enjoying this thoroughly and I highly recommend it. And that's all the knitting that I have for this week, guys. It, like, 
yeah, really short on content this week. But anyway, uh, I guess we will move along into sewing because I, the elephant sitting in the room is on my person. So this is the Paula Top by Republique du Chiffon. Uh, they are a French uh, pattern company, independent pattern company, I should say. And uh, they, their aesthetic is just so in alignment with my style. I love all of their patterns. I wanna make all of their patterns. Um, I feel like I was talking with Emily, who is Slow Fashion Rebel, uh, about this, but I feel like a lot of the indie pattern makers out there are riding this kind of retro style wave, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love it. I really love a good, like, 1950s inspired or 1940s inspired dress, uh, what have you. Uh, however, it's really refreshing to see indie pattern designers out there uh, putting kind of a, you know, a modern urban twist on, on, styles. Uh, this is one of their newer patterns that they came out with and as soon as I saw it I'm like I have to make this right now. <laughs> so I, I downloaded it however the one caveat was that most of their patterns are entirely in French. I don't speak much French <laughs> nor can I really pronounce French correctly so I figured I, I could I could make it work. I mean the construction seemed Fairly simple. So what do you have? You have Google Translate uh, to translate all the French into English, and then you have Alexa, who is awesome at converting measurements from centimeters into inches, and yards into meters, and vice versa. So uh, I had I had some friends to help me out, um, and Emily also, who said if I have any questions, I can just ping her, which, which is amazing. Thank you, Emily. Uh, so, but thankfully, I, I muddled through. It wasn't even a muddle, it was just very, it worked out so well, and I'm so proud of myself for actually doing something like that. Anyway, it's super simple construction. It's fully lined, so you have to cut out the pattern pieces twice. Let me stand up so you can see it in all its glory. So again, it's a summer top. It's a little, you know, there are two ties. I'm not going to... Um, lift these up because it is because it's a summer top there is a certain degree of ventilation underneath the ties <laughs> so um, if I were to do that you're, you're gonna get you're gonna get some belly but anyway um, and this is a you know I like to keep this family friendly uh, to some extent but uh, <laughs> so yeah it's just a really fun summer top and it's so comfortable and I want to make like 10 more of these and this fabric is Shelly which is uh, my favorite, one of my favorite fabrics to sew with because it's so drapey and soft. And uh, I will say the one challenge that I do have with uh, sewing with Shelly is that it's a very slippery fabric. So when you are cutting out pattern pieces, you have to be very careful. Uh, I would recommend using a rotary cutter when working with uh, Shelly or cutting up pattern pieces using uh, Shelly fabric. Some of the seams between the lining and the fashion fabric on the outside uh, don't match up, but because it's such a busy pattern, it really camouflages that. So again, I did not make a muslin because I'm a glutton for punishment. I love to live on the edge and I don't learn from <laughs> my previous mistakes. However, because it seemed like such a, a simple construction and I didn't have to worry too much about um, the form fitting too much, I I just threw caution to the wind, uh, sewed my, my personal measurements and I think it fits perfectly. So yeah, that is the Paula top. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I wanted to say about this other than I want to make 20 more. I do have a bunch of their patterns on my sewing queue or my to sew list. Uh, actually, if you are on thefoldline.com, uh, which is a really great site if you haven't heard of it already and you are into sewing, uh, check out thefoldline.com because it's essentially the ravelry of the sewing world. However, it still has a, a long way to go, I think. It's not it's not as intuitive as Ravelry is, <laughs> but it's still really useful. Emily told me about it, so it just opened up a whole new world to me, and I think it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, definitely check out Republique du Chiffon. Uh, they have a lot of beautiful patterns in there, and I will definitely be translating. Although a lot of their patterns say that the English translation is coming soon, uh, I me, I have the patience of a five-year-old, so I have no qualms about downloading more French patterns and translating them via Google Translate and Alexa. So that said, I am going to move along to shop update because I am having one more update before I go away on vacation, and that is tomorrow, Friday, uh, July. I Wow, the months just kind of meld together in my brain, guys. It's 
the struggle's real. But anyway, <laughs> shop update tomorrow, Friday, July 20th at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. I hope you can make it. And the colors that I will have in the shop tomorrow, well, first of all, it is a sock update. So I'm only going to be having uh, Blitzed, which is my Gold Stellina sock base in the shop. It's Superwash Merino, Nylon, and uh, Gold Stellina. And I'm also gonna have my FTSE base, which is 100% Superwash, Blue Face Luster, and Nylon. And uh, yeah, so far again, uh, the, the fact that I'm alternating bases every week uh, has been amazing. It's been working out so well. A lot of people are coming away with sweater quantities and I, it, that just makes me so happy because I know a lot of you have been upset that you can't, you, in the past you haven't been able to come check out with um, sweater quantities. So the fact that that's working, yay! <laughs> so happy. Um, okay, so the first color that I will be in the shop is Enjoy the Silence. So it's been a while since I dyed this, but I figured it was a nice, bright, fun, summery color. Here's tea leaves on footsie. That will be in the shop. I'll have some Lady of the Lake. Last week I had it on Nouveau, Volca, and Sportlandia, and this week it's on Blitzed and Footsie. So again, I'm gonna have to find a workaround for that colorway because um, Dharma doesn't make one of the dyes anymore <laughs> that is used to uh, make this colorway. So really sad, but I have not given up on finding a workaround. Another colorway that I have not dyed in a long time is Sweet Dreams. So this is back in the shop and I really, I, it's again, I, I don't know why I don't dye this color more often. It is just so fun. Anyway, yeah, that'll be in the shop. Here it is on Footsie. I will also have some Dirty on Purpose. Here it is on Blitzed. And I will have some more Edinburgh. So here it is on Footsie. And yeah, so that is what's gonna be in the shop. I hope you can make it. Uh, again, if you, as I mentioned every week, if you'd like to stay in the loop as far as what colors and bases are gonna be in the shop and just all news surrounding Volenbein yarns, uh, definitely sign up to the newsletter, which you can do by going to my online shop, volenbeinyarns.com and clicking on the newsletter link at the top of the page. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to think. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I felt like Stefan from Saturday Night Live. Yes, 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 yes. For those of you who don't know who Stefan is, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, anyway. <laughs> the Tits Out Collective. I will be doing another round of uh, yarn for the Tits Out, the hashtag Tits Out Collective, which is a movement that the Countess Ablaze uh, started. I wanted to do one more round of hashtag Tits Out Collective, uh, which is a movement started by the Countess Ablaze, who is a, a, another indie yarn dyer based in the UK. And she started this movement where, it, it's a long story, I'm not gonna get into it here. Uh, I will post a link to it in the show notes uh, down below. However, um, it's essentially a movement uh, where indie dyers join forces, they dye their version of a colorway that the Countess created, and they raise money for women's aid. And I will be donating 50% of all sales for this colorway to Planned Parenthood, an organization that is very special and near and dear to my heart. So uh, we, the, the first round that I that I dyed sold out like hotcakes. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, I was just so inspired by that that I wanted to do one more round and that update will be going live on July 30th. So day before the last day of July. Um, so that, that's a Monday, July 30th, Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, and I will announce how much money that we raised all together uh, that I will be donating um, to Planned Parenthood. So again, thank you, thank you so much to Countess Ablaze for starting this amazing movement and to those of you who purchased yarn, uh, knowing that it is going to an amazing cause. You are amazing and I can't wait to share with you how much we raised. Um, so stay tuned for that. One thing that I do wanna mention is that because I'm going away on vacation, orders uh, that are placed in tomorrow's update will not ship until the 30th. Uh, so I, you know, I won't be here, Emily won't be here to ship yarn. So unfortunately, 
you're gonna have to wait a week before your order ships. Uh, so if you do order from me, thank you so much in advance for your patience. Just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up uh, so you're not wondering where where your yarn is. Wow, really short episode, guys. Uh, yeah, I will be back uh, after vacation with a hopefully longer episode with more knitting to show you because I plan on getting a lot of knitting done. I guess that means I'm moving on to the blather section of the episode, <laughs> where, which is a segment where I chat about what's happening in my life other than knitting stuff. Um, so yeah, Dennis and I are going away on vacation. We are going up to Cape Cod as we do every year. His family has a house up there in Harwich, uh, which we go to uh, a couple times during the summer. And this will be our first trip up there. So yeah, it'll be, we are excited to be getting out of the city for a while. Um, and it, as I mentioned, we are bringing Bella with us. Uh, and yeah, this will be her, her fourth, her fourth Cape trip. Um, yeah. And as I mentioned in the previous episode. Uh, she travels well. We've given her her flea medication, so she's she should be ready to brave nature. Um, she's probably more prepared than I am. But <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, I am planning to bring lots of knitting with me. Uh, my smocket shawl. I'm going to bring my rose cardi, by a pattern by Andrea Mowry. I have not worked on that all week, and I'm kicking myself because I really, I'm having a lot of fun with that. Um, and I'm so close to finishing the first quadrant. So close. Uh, so I'll be bringing that along. And then of course I'll be bringing a sock along. I have my Edinburgh socks that I have not put a dent in for so long. Again, my sock knitting mojo is just still in the dumps, but I'm bringing that along. I'm hoping to get, a lot, uh, I'm hoping to finish that pair um, while I'm there. So I'm bringing that. But then at the same time, I do think that a vacation warrants a new cast on. Why? Why does this happen? So I'm, I'm toying around with a couple of ideas. Uh, maybe maybe another shawl pattern. I don't know. But maybe something a little bit more involved in case, you know, the, the stockinette kind of gets to me after a while and I need a little bit, something a little bit more involved. So I'm, I'm going to contemplate a new cast on. We shall see. I did treat myself to something this week. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, I'm not the most avid book reader, you know, when you have a tangible book. I listen to a lot of audiobooks because I generally don't have the time to sit and read a book. Um, although I would really, really, really love to be able to do that. Um, I just can't help feeling that whenever I'm sitting there reading a book, I'm just like, I'd rather be knitting. I'd rather be doing something with my hands. Um, I know there are certain projects like a sock you can knit on while reading with a book propped up. However, I want to take advantage of other times, uh, you know, either right a couple of minutes right before I go to bed or wake up in the morning or um, if I don't feel like knitting on the subway, commuting. Um, I want to take advantage of those windows of time to actually try and read more books, <laughs> more tangible books. So uh, they were, Amazon was having a deal, uh, they had a sale on all of their Kindle readers, so I treated myself to to a Kindle, um, and I love it. It's so adorable and cute, and yeah, it's it's their uh, again not endorsed, just a fan. Uh, it's I, I believe it's their newer version. It's the paper white uh, six inch, and it's it's awesome. Uh, and there's even a backlight, so if I'm in the car with Dennis, uh, I you know, and we're driving at night to Cape Cod, I actually scratch that thought because I do get car sick when I read in cars. Um, yeah, so really weird, uh, but I, I can, well, I can knit in cars, I can't read in cars. There's something about it, maybe it's like the way my eyes move across the page or whatever and the motion that makes me nauseous, but yeah, if I read in the car, I just can't, I, I will get vilely ill. Granted, it has not happened since I was maybe five or six or seven years old where I was in the car with my friend and we were reading in the back seat and I got I got really ill. <laughs> so um, I haven't really tested the waters with reading in cars since, but I don't want to relive that experience. However, um, reading at night might not be so bad because it's dark and you know, my peripheral vision might not. Anyway, science project. <laughs> So really excited to make use of my new Kindle over the weekend. We're gonna probably be head hitting up the beach every day. Help me. It's probably gonna get a lot of use. Um, yay, so there's that. And what else did I wanna share with you? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I started a new blog, strangebrewcreative.com. Uh, it's just 
a place. I've mentioned this every week. You're probably tired of me talking about it. But anyway, I started a new blog. It's called strangebrewcreative.com. It's where I blog about knitting. It's about sewing. It's about me dabbling in photography and all the things. And you know, it's, it's pretty much just a B-side to my knitting content that is Volan Vine uh, or Volan Vine yarn. So uh, if you are into that, hop on over to strangebrewcreative.com, check it out. I up I post a new uh, blog post as much as I can uh, whenever I have time. Uh, I got a little bit more ambitious and might have started a new audio podcast. <laughs> so <laughs> I honestly don't know where these ideas come from and why I indulge them, but I do. Uh, because once I get an idea in my head, there's just no stopping me. This podcast started out as audio and it moved into video because I wanted to be able to show my works in progress off as I talk about them. So it, it just, transitioning to video just made sense. However, I really did miss the audio aspect of podcasting, so I kind of wanted to do like, return to that in some shape or form. So I uploaded the very first episode uh, this week. So by the time you're watching, um, by the time you're watching this, I will have recorded and edited three, three different podcasts because I'm a crazy lady. The first episode is actually a conversation between uh, me and my knitting besties, Laura, who is Jinx Yarns and the host of the Dyer's Notebook podcast, and Maria, uh, who is uh, Cables and Crewnecks on Instagram, and she hosts the Cables and Crewnecks video podcast on YouTube also. Um, and yeah, they were my very first knitting friends that I ever made <laughs> uh, when I, since I started podcasting, and I thought it was amazing that we've stayed friends uh, for as long as we have. Um, Yarngasm is coming up on, I believe, eight or nine years, which is, is crazy. So I, I thought it'd be really cool to just kind of sit down with them and, or Skype with them, I should say, and talk about our friendship, how we became friends, how we started podcasting. And, you know, we also give some really fun tips on how to, well, fun and helpful tips on how to start your own podcast. So I thought it was a really fun conversation. Uh, definitely hop on over to strangebrewcreative.com or wherever you get your podcast from and check it out. You can download the podcast wherever it is you get your, your podcasts from. Uh, I actually upload via anchor.fm, which is a free podcasting platform. So you basically upload, uh, they, they host your podcast and then they syndicate, they'll, they will syndicate your podcast to all of the, um, all of the, the podcast platforms. So iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, I believe there, there are a whole bunch, but, uh, it, they're really awesome because they do that for me. So, uh, yeah, give it a listen to, I hope you guys enjoy. And yeah, that's, that's my new, that's my new little side project. There's no stopping me. But anyway, uh, I think I think that is it for this week, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are having an amazing summer or winter wherever you are in the world. Uh, and I will see you uh, when I get back, or I'll see you on the interweb, guys. I will be on Inst I'll be all over Instagram as I usually am. So you know, I'll see you on the interwebs. Duh. <laughs> so anyway, that said, happy knitting, and I will see you next time.